on FYI. Six months after our investigation on kids vaping, are the government finally cracking down? And a special report on how climate change is affecting bees here in the UK. Of all the creatures on the planet, one of the smallest is actually one of the most important. Welcome to FYI, where we bring you the latest info on the stories that matter to you. Exactly, and to start off with, we've got some big news about vaping. So about six months ago, I did an FYI investigation looking at how vapes are specifically aimed at kids and how the thousands of underage kids have been so tempted to try vapes because of the bright colours and the sweet flavours, even though it's illegal to buy or sell vapes to anybody under the age of 18. So how old were you when you first started vaping? I was 12 in year eight. So about uh, 13 years old. I was 15. Basically all of my friends did it, so I just hung around with them so much that I was like, why not? We actually sent the government the findings of the FY Investigates, right? Yeah, we did, and we even landed an interview with the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, and here's what he had to say at the time. So recently, I investigated the rising increase in the amount of children that have started to take up vaping. So what are we going to do? You're right. You know, they're, they're, these, the adverts for these things are designed to appeal to kids. Yeah. You know, with the colours they use, the characters they use. That's not right. This is all things that shouldn't be happening. So before they bring in a new law, they want to hear from everybody, including teenagers, in what's called a consultation. So anybody can go on the government website and say what they think should be done about companies targeting vapes at kids. Scarlett went to speak to the government's chief medical advisor, Sir Chris Whitty, to find out more. Well, firstly, I'm really grateful for you for actually highlighting it because it is a very serious problem. It's scary to see that they're actually targeted at young people. Well, exactly. And I think one, you know, if you look back in history, the cigarette industry always targeted children and now the vaping industry is doing the same thing. The aim of the law is going to be to allow us to restrict the number of flavours, restrict the colours, possibly reduce uh, disposables, because these are, are targeted very often at children. So are you frustrated at all that it still just seems so easy to get a hold of these things? Yes, and that's why I'm really pleased that the Prime Minister announced that uh, he's going to put into Parliament for MPs to vote on. I hope by this time next year the law will be through. The reason we have vapes at all is because smoking is so dangerous. The fact that vapes are a bit safer, and we'd encourage them to use it if, if you're a smoker, is the reason we still have vapes at all. But we really do not want anybody who's not currently a smoker to be taking up vaping. It's like peer pressure as well. You know, once you start, it can be so hard to stop. That's exactly what the companies want you to do. Is they want you to start, and then you get addicted to nicotine and their products. You may have seen newspaper headlines like these, warning of the damage that vaping can have on the health of young people. And it's something that Chris Whitty is very worried about. There are three things that I'm, I'm particularly worried about. It's people becoming addicted so that then they're controlled by the companies. We don't know what many of these flavours do in the long run. There are many things which are safe, for example, to eat, but which are absolutely not safe uh, to go in through your lungs. And then the third thing is that there are some illegal vapes which have uh, even more toxic and dangerous things in them, so I'm worried for all those reasons. Now, how are your fake news detection skills? Check out this video of a lion prowling the streets in Italy. Not sure if it's real or not? Well, neither were we, so we did some investigating. Find out later if it's fake news or fact. Now to the latest on the war between Israel and Hamas. Here in the UK, hundreds of thousands of protesters have gathered in London for a march, calling for a ceasefire in the war. Most of the fighting is happening here, in the Gaza Strip which is a small Palestinian territory controlled by the militant group Hamas. The war began on the 7th of October, after Hamas launched an attack on Israel, killing 1,400 people, including many children and taking more than 200 people hostage. Since then, Israel has been carrying out airstrikes and a ground invasion into Gaza, where Hamas are based, amongst the two million citizens who live there. Israel wants to stop Hamas ever being able to carry out attacks on Israel again. But since the start of the war, over 11,000 Palestinian people are reported to have been killed, including thousands of children. 
We saw this video of Palestinian kids giving a speech at a press conference in Gaza. Since the 7th of October, we face extermination, killing, bombing falling over our heads. We come now to shout and invite you to protect us. We want to live, we want peace, we want medicine, food and education. And we want to live as the other children live. Now we don't know who wrote the speech, but the charity Save the Children says that there's no safe place for children in Gaza at the moment. Schools are closed and families are sheltering in fear. We've been reporting on the war for a few weeks now and the history about how it's all come about. For more info, you can check out our previous episodes on our website, first.news forward slash FYI. Now to a special report to mark World Children's Day, where we stand up for children's rights around the world. Three girls from a poor area of Brazil wanted to highlight how in their country, girls are often treated much worse than boys. So with help from the charity Menina Dancer, they created a dance called Stones and Flowers to tell their story. And to their huge surprise, the charity arranged for them to come over to Britain to perform it, including to MPs in Parliament. Here's their story. When the paper revealed I'll go to England, I was dying with happiness inside. I started to cry and I was so happy because it's an opportunity that almost no one has. I never imagined that at 13 I would be travelling to another country, especially to be here representing Brazil in Parliament. The dance we are trying to show to the world is about a lost childhood. It represents a childhood that was cut short by having to grow up really quickly. It's the reality in Brazil for girls. In my town, girls are supposed to just do housework while the men go out to work. For them, the girls aren't as important. This doesn't just happen in Brazil, but the whole world. Sometimes people really put down women and girls, so we don't get as many opportunities. They say that girls can't do this or that, but they can do everything. I find it difficult to talk about things, but when I dance, it's like I'm free to express myself without words. For me, dancing is a refuge where I feel free. The dance ends with joy and happiness and that feeling of overcoming difficulties. I liked the experience because I saw some of the audience got really emotional and understood our message. I hope the MPs are moved to help us improve the situation for girls. We want to change men's attitudes so that girls can be free to go where they want and to live without being looked down on. Over the past few weeks, we've been bringing you special reports from kids all over the world, investigating how climate change is threatening the survival of the amazing wildlife on our planet. And this week, we're back home in the UK to see how bees are being affected and what we can all do to help them. on the planet, one of the smallest is actually one of the most important, the bee. Some people are scared of them, but I love bees because without their help, we wouldn't be able to grow a lot of the tasty food we enjoy, like strawberries, peas, tomatoes and apples. But bees are at risk as our climate changes and this could cause big problems. I am meeting Archie and his granny Lorraine. They are beekeepers and know a lot about these brilliant mini beasts. So Lorraine, why are bees so important? Bees are important to us because they provide us with pollination. They pollinate our crops, our trees, our plants and flowers. 
Lorraine told me that climate change is causing bee populations to decline. Because they struggle to cope with rapidly changing seasons and extreme weather, like droughts. There we go. To make sure we don't get stung by the bees, okay. we are putting on special suits to protect okay. us. So, Archie, what do you love about bees? It's so fun just to see what's going on in the hive. They're so amazing to me. Whoa! This one I'm going to let you handle, OK? What's being filled in these little holes? Is it the honey? So most, some of them might be honey, but in these holes here, you'll have the brood, which is the worker bees. This is so exciting. Luckily, Archie and I aren't the only ones that care about the bees. There are lots of things being done to protect them. Across the country, bus stops have been created. Special bee-friendly bus stops. I'm going on a ride to see some. Oh, there's some coming up, Nigel. Look at wow. the flowers on Look the top. Look at those pink flowers. Why are the bus stops so important? Bus stops are important because they attract bees and pollinated insects into our towns and cities. The plants make the air cleaner, which is good for people, bees and other insects too. Wow, the bus stops are pretty cool, but what can people like you and me do to help the bees? Archie has a pretty good idea, a bee hotel. A bee hotel is a, is a home for solitary bees. a bee that lives by itself for its whole life. Can we make a bee hotel? Yeah, sure. All you need is a recycled can, some bamboo canes, and a bit of help from a grown-up. They have to be at least eight, eight millimetres thick, otherwise they're just going to get bugs in them. You want to tie it as much as possible, and so we can hang it up like this. So next time you see a bee in your garden, don't hope it buzzes off. Make it a hotel and hope it sticks around. Because these little creatures are pollinating powerhouses, and without them, life on Earth would be very different. Now, we have a special guest with us. Maya was born with one eye because of a rare condition and has just successfully raised thousands of pounds to go to America to get a bionic eye fitted. Hi Maya, thanks for joining us. Hi. So, can you tell us what a bionic eye is? So it's basically like a prosthetic eye, but it has a chip in the middle so it will attract to sunlight and it will dilate and it will look like exactly the same like that eye. That's really cool. And you won't be able to see out of it, will you? No, I'm completely blind out of that eye. And I'm really sorry to hear that you've been experiencing some bullying. And I know that you're hoping that having a bionic eye will change that. Yeah, so I get bullied in school and outside of school. And it makes me sometimes feel sad, mad or angry. I'm sorry, you know, you've had to deal with some of that. But I also know that you, you're a big Manchester City fan. You've definitely picked the best team there. I'm a City fan as well. But do you almost like use football to try and ignore all those nasty comments and just enjoy yourself? Yeah, because when I play football, it makes me feel happy. We've actually got a clip of you getting a message from one of your biggest footballing heroes, Jill Scott, former England and Manchester City player. Let's have a look. Hi Maya, it's Jill Scott here. I just wanted to send you a little message to say how inspirational and how brave you are. I've heard that you're a big fan of the Lionesses and I'm sure they're all massive, massive fans of you because you truly are one inspirational girl. So how did you feel when you first saw the message? I didn't expect it at first, but when I saw it, I felt really happy and grateful. What's your message to other kids who might be experiencing bullying? Just to ignore them because mm. they're perfect just the way they are and it doesn't matter if they're different or not. Yeah, definitely. So thank you so much for joining us, Maya. Um, good luck with your trip to America and let us know how your bionic eye is getting on. Thank you. <laughs> So did you guess this week's fake news or fact? Well, this video of a lion prowling around the streets in Italy 
is fact. Kim with the lion escaped from a traveling circus that was in town. Residents were advised to stay at home while the lion spent several hours roaming around. He was eventually captured by authorities and returned to the circus owners. See, we weren't lying. Very good, Brayden. Well, that's about it for this week, but you can catch us next week for all the top stories. Bye. Bye.